what I want to do is show how to create a simple web page with an integrated database meaning you're able to add data and it automatically adds it to a database which is then displayed in in the data grid and what I want to do is use components that directly tie this into the presentation layer of the website meaning I'm not going to use components to build and so what we'll do is we'll create a new project empty project uh, we can just call this web app one and okay once we get here I'm gonna add a new page so I'm gonna click on add new item select web form and I'm gonna call this default so it's my home page and okay we're over here and now what I want to do is create a database and so I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna do the same thing add new item and then this time I'm gonna use data and I can select what I want so in this case I want to select an SQL compact 4.0 local database and I'm gonna call this DAT test database you're gonna get this message you need to hit yes and what that'll do is it will make sure that your data is attached to the app.data folder and as you can see it's right here and so now what I can do is open this up and create my table so I can hit create table and name it so the name will be support plans and I'm gonna create an identifier primary key and it's going to, basically the primary key should be the same name of the table underscore ID now this is something that I do just because it's it's a uh, it's the way we do things in our office this will be an int and it will be a unique and it is a primary key then I can support plan and and varchar is fine and description so I have three fields support plans ID which is the auto number which is primary key support plan and description okay and I'm gonna go ahead and hit oh actually here I just wanna make sure I put this to true because it's an identity alright and then I'm gonna hit okay and so there it is what I can do is also add some test data to it by hitting clicking on show table data and I can enter test here for example and maybe test description and that's fine and now I can actually use it on my web on my web page so what I'm gonna do is add a component called the data grid grid view there it is I'm gonna choose auto format and maybe select something just to make it look a little bit nicer without having having to do it myself and attach it to an actual data source so here on the drop down menu I'm gonna click on new data source I'm gonna select the, da the, the table and then I'm gonna call it DAT database and okay connection string I wanna use this local one same thing you just gotta remember how you named it next next and I'm gonna show table for support plans and it's gonna use the asterisk so it'll be select asterisk from support plans and this is my select query and if I wanna test it out there is the code and finish and there I am so if I wanna test this code I can run it and I should be able to see the data that I have in there you go okay so now what I wanna do is create the ability of adding new data to this using this same control right here and so to do so let me add two elements to the GUI which will be a label and then a text box and let's format this a little bit better rename my label so that it's more intuitive and we'll call this support plan oops there you go plan and I'm gonna rename my label and then here I'm gonna change this to TXT support plan and I'm gonna add another one for description 
but I'm going to cheat a little, just do a copy paste so I don't have to redo all that and then just rename this. So this will be description. And this will be LBL description. And this will be TXT description. There you go. And make this look a little nicer. Move this a little bit. There I am. And now I need an event handler that will handle the, the data input. So I'm going to click on button and name this to add data and rename the button to btn add. btn add. Okay. Even though I have the GUI set, I don't have anything to handle the insert parameter. So this is where I have to start. Now I already have the select parameter. If I click on this and I go to select query, you'll see that I have this set already. But what I need to do now is account for insert, update, and delete, which were the th the two other, or the three other option, uh, options. Sorry. So I'm going to click here where it says insert query, and I'm going to actually write the query to insert data to my table. And so what this will be is insert into and then my table name which is support plans and then values sorry values no 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 support plans open parentheses and the data that I want to input so it's support plan comma and description and again these two have to match the name of my columns so support plan and description and then I do values and these will be the parameter parameters that I'm gonna use and I set these as parameters by putting an ampersand so it'll be support plan and again I name them the same just so that it's easy for me to recognize and description so insert into support plans and then the list of columns and then the values that'll go into those columns but I need to add this down here as well so here in the new parameter I'm gonna call this exactly the same support plan and I'm gonna add another one for description if you don't add this or if what you use in code does not match exactly this you will get a null reference exception and I can hit OK I can do the same for everything else so let's say delete query I can do the same thing I can say delete from and my my table name which is support plans where support plans ID equals and then the parameter plan ID let's say is what I call the parameter and then add the parameter here so it'll be plan ID and OK and now I'm ready to actually write the code that ties into this and so the code will go here and so when the user hits add it's gonna execute this code and in this case I'm gonna set up the following DA, I'm sorry, DAT database dot insert parameter and the name of my parameter which in my case is plan name actually it's called support plan not plan name support plan dot default value equals and then whatever the user inputted into this text dat database dot insert parameter for the next one and it's called description dot default value equals txt description dot text and uh, not, oops <laughs> Alright, back. Not template control. Text. Alright. And now I could actually call the insert function. However, the, invert, the in, insert function can fail. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I use a try catch. Just in case something fails. And so here, I will call this. And then if it's successful, I can set my text boxes equal to null string again just so that it, it it looks nicer meaning it's ready for the next input and there I am and I can execute this again if it fails if something fails here automatically go back to the spelling here and the spelling here these two support plan and description 
must match your insert query here so it has to say support plan description support plan description with the ampersand with the add sign sorry right there okay and now I can run this and let's say test 2 test 2 and there it is it, it's added back now you can modify this code a lot more not modify add to this code by using select functions and deleting and doing a lot of this stuff but it's gonna follow the same sequence meaning whatever you do it's gonna use this either select query insert query delete query or update query and you can take a look at your books for more information on on the rest of the two but it's again it's very similar to what I wrote uh, I hope this helps you guys out a little bit and if you have any questions or need assistance feel free to email me at any time have a great day